Why do you cry in your stone heart? How much desire? Why do you tear down the sea? Why do you love to be Big Buddha? Ah. <laughs> yesterday you were all yellow, so today I thought I'd compete with you, and then, <laughs> then you become all green. I cannot run after you all the time with color. Yesterday also one person said she liked my rope, and it's gone. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's okay, it's okay. You are the one? Okay, okay. But don't always copy them, okay, huh? Then I'll have nothing to wear anymore. <laughs> it's not only that, but I'm not here to give you clothes. You, you are not homeless, okay? Just sometimes when natural, spontaneous, is okay, yeah? But otherwise, even if I like to give everything, uh, it, there's no time to arrange all that, you know? And also, sometimes I invite somebody for food, you know, or the monks I offer. But I cannot do this all day to all of you, even though I would like to. Please don't mind, okay? Otherwise, I will have no time to see you, no time to meditate, no time for many other things. <sighs> I'm breathless. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Good, but I just ate my breakfast, so I'm very <clears throat> strong now. <laughs> I wish I don't have to eat. I save sometimes also. Okay, now we go to heaven and hell checking the Buddhas, huh? Yeah. Huh. You like story, huh? I love stories. Yeah, I love stories. It's so easy, simple to understand the principles of things when you just read the, you know, the story. It's more lively. It's more like exemplary, right? If I always tell you, Keep the precept. Don't kill. Don't steal. Don't lie. He <laughs> said, okay, master, okay, okay. <laughs> What's the big deal? I don't know why. <laughs> but all this true story from the Buddha, you know, we feel refreshed and uh, re-inspired, re-encouraged, and so we feel happier to keep the precepts because we understand why. And we, we read the story, it's so interesting and so easy to remember, yeah? Oh, when, when uh, we remember all these people, then we re remember why they go to hell, yeah? Why they gone to heaven, why they became Buddha, why they became Bodhisattva, and why, what for the Buddhas are there, what for, I mean saints, yeah? What for enlightened masters are there, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. then we remember better. Yes. So I like very much. Recently, I had more time to meditate, and I had only a couple of books similar like this, Buddhist story in, in my mountain, and I read it, read it, and I thought, wow, I wish I could read it to all the people, I mean, to you, at least to you. And then, so I came here, I have more. <laughs> I have more here. Hmm. And uh, if you stay here, I will continue to 
entertain you. <laughs> And of course, you have to take care of your family. So you please, if you must go, you must go, okay? And we see each other again, okay? Who take care of your son? Beautiful. <laughs> you, of course, who else is beautiful around there? <laughs> my son is with my husband's Spanish family in Spain. Oh, you are Spanish? My yeah. husband is Spanish. Ah, no wonder he talked in some accent. I thought, how come New Zealand people talk like that? <laughs> you came now? Yes. I thought you went to New Zealand. You changed? We changed. We just came back nearly two years ago. Oh, I see. Because you talk in New Zealand, so I thought you're still there. Okay, missing the dark uh, cloud of uh, England, huh? And the rainy days, huh? Yeah. In England, there are only two kinds of weather. <laughs> Sunny day and cloudy day, yeah. Mostly cloudy day. <laughs> yeah, but people, they live in England and they just like it, I don't know. That's why England is still full of people. Not everybody went out of the country because of the fog, because of the, you know, the weather, no. They like it. They went outside to Spain, you know, having sunshine and all that, and then they miss rainy England. <laughs> Some say that. And then they move back. Yeah. And two years old? No, now it must be four already. No. The master, he's just turned 14. 14? <laughs> God, time passed. <laughs> you guys don't look like you have a 14 years old. Look at her. Are you younger than your husband? No, Master, he's younger than me. Oh, no! Shame on you. You, you look old. <laughs> Older, yeah. Too old for her. <laughs> it's good, it's good. No, I'm just kidding. You're a lovely couple, lovely couple. Beautiful husband and wife, yeah. Okay. I don't know your name, so I just call your husband, and I call her wife, so, <laughs> so you know, okay? <laughs> when I say wives, then they mean everybody except the nuns. Yeah? <laughs> when I say husbands, then I don't mean this guy. <laughs> Let me check it out, okay? I didn't have time today to check our new story, but I guess all of them are wonderful, wonderfully terrifying, you know, in <laughs> this sutra. <laughs> okay, now, I just want to tell you, just want to remind you, because all this story and the merit that you acquire when you take care of the Buddha's stupas or you offer to the living Buddhas or the past Buddhas or the Sangha, all this is for the ordinary people, okay? Yes, the people who want to be reborn again as gods in heaven, maybe small gods, big gods, depends on their merit, yes? or people who like to become humans again, with richness, power. Remember, they all dedicate their merit for the next life to become king of this, and, you know, officials of that, and gods of that heaven, and this heaven. But this is not for us, okay? But it's good that you know. Also, it reminds you to practice well and to keep the precepts. Because, 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 because. Yeah? Yes. Remember, even yesterday, for example, the old woman that painted, repaired the stupa of the Buddha. Stupa means some small thing they built to put his, uh, maybe, a relic in it, or a statue to stupa, to, to remind people that Buddha was there, existed, and practices, and so praying for some protection and merit. Yes? So she painted, she repaired it with 500 people. Oh no, 32 people, sorry. I always remember 500, 500, 500. <laughs> this is different, 32 people. And then she and these uh, 32 people also came back always rich, yeah? Wealthy, smart, strong. It depends on what they did, see? So she was smart, intelligent, beautiful, yeah? Yes, and and also have a very good temperament, yeah, moral standard, and met the Buddha practice already, yes. And that lifetime, a life after life, many lifetimes like that, they were always rich, famous, and intelligent, beautiful. Hmm? Yes. But always being chased by the karma, because they killed just one buffalo. 
One buffalo only, always killed, died in such a terrible way. So mind you, all the merit that we dedicate to be a god or angels or divas or humans with position, power and money brings us nothing, protect us from nothing. Karma is still there, chasing after us, life after life, until somehow it's dissolved, because the strength of karma is uh, doing, uh, it's kind of wind down, or maybe the time has come that the karma is done. Yeah. So it's no safety, no safety at all. Mm-hmm. For us to stay in the heavens or to stay on earth with our power, merit, whatever it is, it's all impermanent. So it's better we practice like immediate enlightenment, and then from then on, you will never worry about anything else. It's incredible. Even though you've done good merit, but if you've done bad karma, you must also pay. <laughs> they don't deduct it. Okay, I have a lot of merit. Why don't you take some of that? And you know, uh, I'll say, make up for my karma. No, they don't do that. Karma is karma, merit is merit. That is a problem. Accept. Accept. If you met a master already, yes. And even then you had karma. <laughs> even then you had karma, you still first go heaven. Yeah, because of a, the master will take you up, huh? Even non initiate. And from then on, you know, because of that merit, he will continue to have merit, merit, whatever karma just left behind, rotten somewhere. <laughs> and the Yama is just looking up and drooling. <laughs> Cannot get him down. Yeah. Remember, there was one thief, told you the story about a thief. Huh? His father said, Don't ever go into any temple and listen. Yeah. But then he happened to be at the temple and then he listened. Yeah. One time. And then, uh, and then he heard a sentence say, "Real God has no shadow." Oh, just remember that. Remember initiation. Probably he just, just, just listen to that one. And then one day he continued to do his uh, stealing stuff, and uh, his his father tell him he always had to escape. Yeah, he saw him many ways to escape. And it's okay, but one day he was caught. Yeah, and and the father told him, even if you're caught you don't confess, then it's no problem. Nobody can do anything to you. Just say, no, no, I didn't do it, I didn't do it. <laughs> okay. Okay, so he does that, then he's caught, and then he say, no, no, I didn't do it, it wasn't me, no, no, I didn't do it, I wasn't going to steal nothing, no, no, I have nothing, look at that, no, nothing. So the people cannot do anything, and then they thought, oh, if we pretend to be the God, you know, then he would confess, because he said, I tell you the truth, you know, even if God's here, he would know it. So they said, okay, they test it, you know, and they pretend to be gods, and then they question him, interrogate him. And then they uh, lead the lamb and look mysterious and all that stuff, you know, and in the night and, go, <laughs> and interrogate him. And then he was about to, he's scared he was about to say the truth, because it's in front of God, you know, they make it themselves look majestic and like a god. He was about to confess, and then he saw the lamp shining on them, and the shadows on the wall. And I remember in the temple, the real gods have no shadow. So he continued, no, no, I haven't done it. I haven't done it. If you are God, you know already, don't ask me. Ah. <laughs> so they let him go. They think he told the truth. And from then on, after he died, he went to heaven because he has listened to one sentence of that probably initiation. So the person came to him, the person who, who told him to go in that temple, came to him and said, okay, in a few days your marriage will run out and they will send you to hell for what you did. So if the church come and ask, but you still have some marriage left, you know, so if the church come and ask you, you want you have your marriage first or you want to have your sin punished first. So you will say, I want my merit first. Yeah. 
And then, then after he still continued to stay or go higher heaven, then that master continued teaching him. And then he has more marriage, more marriage. And who cares about the sin anymore? <laughs> Understand? Yes. yes. So that's why the masters came down. That's why the Buddha sacrificed for human beings, same with Jesus, Mahavira, Prophet Mohammed, and others, huh? countless masters, always come and go, come and go, and bodhisattvas also, meaning lesser saints, yes. And uh, the bodhisattva is the one who almost become Buddhas, and they're going to be Buddhas sooner or later. And they still have to rely on the powers of many Buddhas so they can do their rescuing work on the planet. Understand? The Buddha, no need to rely on any body power except giving power to whoever has this Bodhisattva vow to save beings, or the Buddha save them themselves. When you became Buddha, your journey ends. Uh, you can either save in the being or you don't have to save any beings. Or you save the beings, and still you go up. You have no karma attached to you, you just go up. No matter how many you save, you just go up. Maybe you suffer when you're alive, but that doesn't mean that you have to come back, yeah, because of this karma. But if you do come back because you, your love, your compassion for other beings, then the karma that you still had f from last life, maybe for the, from other beings from last life, you know, like the one you save, or the one you are going to save, will be upon you. Then you will be born a just ordinary person, and then you have to somehow awaken or find a master. Somehow it will lead you to practice again, and then you become a Buddha again. Okay? So you are safe if you are Buddha or Bodhisattva. But you have to be reach such certain level, you know, as Bodhisattva or as Buddha. Then even if you were born as human again, you will not be uh, oppressed too long. Yeah? You will somehow, somehow in yourself, something stirring up all the time. And then somehow something will lead you to meet another Buddha or enlightened master or the one who knows the teaching of the Buddha and pass it on to you again, then you okay. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, like that. It's better, safer to keep in your mind that you want liberation. Yeah? You want the ultimate goal of practice. You don't want to be a god in heaven. You don't want to be a human with rich and power and all that. Unless you want it to so because you think Unless uh, when you go up there and you see, okay, if I become prime minister of this land, I could help so and so, you know, my relatives, my friends, my countrymen at that time, then okay, your choice. Mm. Not pushed down by karma. Mm? Yeah.